So let's talk about what we're going to use this for mainly in the shop here and then the features it has and then we'll jump into the safety portion and how it functions. So this radial arm saw is primarily for cutting down large stock into smaller pieces. So if I've got an eight foot long board and especially if I have a, a wider board, anything, it doesn't matter, six inches, seven inches, eight inches, this will cut up to approximately about 12 inch wide board. Anything wider than that, we can cut it a different way. With our miter saw, again, that only has a capacity of eight inches. Anything over eight inches, we're gonna bring it over here. And especially if it's a bigger board, this is a perfect place to go ahead and cut that down to whatever length we want it to be. So let's go over what we've got here and the parts and all that. We've got our table here, our bed. We've got our fence that we're gonna push our stock up against. We've got the motor and the blade here and the blade guard. Um, I have this marked out on the table where your hands are not within this area. Now this is only about four inches. I prefer six inches, but just know that your hands, right or left hand, whether you're here or holding it here, holding it here your hands do not go past the line into this cutting zone that's the no-go zone all our stock is going to go on here we'll measure it up to how much we want to cut off we always want to cut off at least an inch more than we need and so we'll go ahead and set that up when i'm holding my stock i'm just going to pull this out i'm going to pull it as smoothly as possible through the machine it will try and climb through the wood because of the rotation of the blade It's cutting this way. So it's going to want to grab that wood a little bit. Um, so you need to be in control of this as you pull it through. Also, you need to be in control of it as it goes back on the sled to the back of the machine because it is on a cable with a spring that will pull this whole trunnion back to the back of the machine. Now know that we can cut at angles. You can see in here that there are some angles here. We're not going to be using it for that. We're primarily going to be using this for cutting right angles, 90 degree angles right through our piece. You can also pivot this to the left and do some bevel cuts. We're not going to be doing that with this. Again, it's just for doing 90 degree cuts and only doing rough cuts. Our equipment also has our power switch right here. We've got a green button to start it or a red button to stop it. We have our safety switch here in case I need to hold my piece and not let it go and I can't reach over to hit this. I can just hit this with my leg and shut down the machine. Now, if you come over here and try and turn this on, it's not turning on. Again, you always wanna give this a twist, make sure this is not pushed in, make sure it's unlocked, and then we can go ahead and hit our green button and the machine should be working again. Now, when we're bringing our wood or our stock over, um, we wanna make sure it's supported on the end. And if you need to bring this down, this, this is slightly adjustable, we can bring this down so it's as level as possible. Make sure it's locked down and our wood is supported. The other thing is along this fence, we wanna make sure it's nice and tight against the fence. If it's bowed out a little bit, if it's coming this direction, that's fine. But we, what we don't want is when we push this against the fence, it's only making contact here, making contact here, and then it's bowing in this way. If it's bowing in this way, when we go to make our cut, this piece can go back against tight against the fence and pinch the blade and then we have problems. So whenever using this, hands here nice and tight against the fence, the board should be nice and tight all the way across the fence or at least no gaps here or along the blade or if it's curved out a little bit, that's also fine, but that's really what we're looking for. So as I go, I'm just gonna kind of show you a sample here. As I go, take my cut, I'm just gonna come through. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go all the way through the board. Once I do that, I'm gonna, again, just lower this all the way back before I clear anything off or do anything else. I'm gonna make sure I shut off the machine and the blade has come to a stop. One other thing to remember is before you start your cut, you wanna make sure that there are no off cuts kind of hanging out back here that the blade can hit or in this area that the blade can hit or in this groove that the blade can hit. We wanna make sure everything is cleared off this area before we turn on the machine and then our stock is good and ready to cut. Again, one thing I need to be aware of is as I pull it through my stock, this blade will want to climb into my wood. So I need to be in control of this as I pull this through my piece and I'm gonna bring it all the way through. Once it's through, I'm gonna return it back to its resting point. 
shut it off and wait till the motor comes to a complete stop before removing any access material or anything like that. Also, when we are cutting a piece, if I'm cutting something smaller than an inch or two, you can notice I've got a gap here. And sometimes that blade will grab that piece and throw it back into the dust collection area. So you need to be aware of that. If I'm doing a long piece, I always like to go at least a couple inches past that. But at times we are just cutting an inch off an inch or two at a time. And we'll explain while we're doing that in a second. But if I'm just turning off a small piece, know that it may get thrown back uh, to the back of the machine. Uh, nothing to worry about, but you need to be aware of what's going on. One thing you always need to do whenever I've got a rough sawn piece of lumber is I always want to cut off the first inch because when a board dries, especially on the ends, sometimes I'll get something called checking and that's basically small cracks in the end where the moisture has dissipated and, and gives me a small crack. So I will cut off an inch of material. I will take it, I will throw it on the ground, see if it breaks apart or chips. Uh, if it stays solid, then I know I'm fine, I've got a good board. If not, if, it, if that one inch piece cracks, I'm gonna take this another inch, slice of another inch, throw that on the ground gently, don't get crazy, uh, and I'm gonna see if that cracks or splits. If it does, I'm gonna keep going, cutting off an inch at a time until I get that one piece that no longer cracks or splits because if I make a project out of a board where I've got that little micro crack, it's not gonna get smaller, it's only getting it bigger and I don't want that in my project. So I wanna make sure I get all that checking, all those little cracks out of there that maybe I can't see with my eye. Um, and that's how I'm gonna do that. Just slice, bring my board over, take that about approximately one inch, cut it off, throw it on the ground, see if it breaks. If it breaks, slice off another one. If it doesn't break, I'm good to go. I can take from here, send this down to however long I wanna cut off, plus another inch, slice this off, and then I've got my stock to go ahead and mill up. In general, whatever the longer side of the board is, that's the one I am holding or pressing against the fence. And the shorter piece is just gonna live here on the table and I'm not holding that. Just one hand on the longer stock and then pulling it through, okay? If you want to, if the longer stock happens to be on this side, right hand here, left hand, that is also an option. What I don't wanna ever see, should never be done, is obviously this crossing my arms or this crossing my arms, okay? You always, whatever you wanna do, if you wanna do this way, my arms are not crossed. I wanna go this way, my arms are not crossed. It's just that my hands are not in this zone here. Also, again, I never start with the blade here. I wait till it's up to speed, pull it through, return it back and then shut off the machine before I remove any scraps or any small pieces. I'm not grabbing this. Even though the blade's back here, it's a good six inches away. I'm not grabbing anything from in this area that's cut off or scrap until it shuts off. Last but not least, obviously, we wait till the blade comes to full stop, complete stop, and then we take our wood away and then we can walk away from the machine. When we are cutting material, I don't have multiple boards stacked up at a time. I'm only cutting one board at a time. I don't have one, two, three, four here or them stacked up this way. Only one board, one cut at one time. 